Welcome back everyone, it's Robert McFarlane here. Today we're gonna to be going through three of my techniques to find out the audience for your film. So what is storytelling? Well, fundamentally, it is the transfer of knowledge, experience, morals, ideas to another person. That is how humans have evolved. We are storytellers. That means our audience is not ourselves. So what does that mean? We have to really work out how we are going to tell our stories to an audience. So we're going to use three techniques to work out from your script who your audience is. This information is going to change the way you direct your film. Everything from your camera angles, your lens choices, and the way you edit and the music you use is going to be manipulated and changed by who your end audience is. Generally, our friends have either similar likes, dislikes, um, morals, ambitions, ideas, work ethic. So now you can start to do the same thing to your protagonist. If you don't have this information, start to write these things down. What are their hobbies? What do they enjoy doing? What's their profession? How focused on their profession are they? So once you've written out as much about the protagonist as you possibly can, and I mean, just go hell for leather, then start to think about, well, who's actually gonna like this character? Who's gonna find them interesting? Who's gonna agree with how this character might be living? All of us are struggling through something in our life. So there will always be a set number of people who probably are struggling through something similar or they've struggled through the same thing in their past. Either way, you've got a set number of people who can now relate to your protagonists trials and tribulations. At the same time, you also want your audience to relate to your protagonist on a more fundamental level. You want them to relate to your protagonist on a values level. Yes, I understand. Maybe an anti-hero might be someone that people aren't gonna relate to too well. However, even with an anti-hero, they always have a save the cat moment. They always have a moment where we see that deep down their values are good. And we, at the end of the day, as human beings, always put ourselves as the hero of our own story. We just want to know that even if this character is totally bad, they could be redeemed. So an example of a brilliant character who we empathize with is the lead character in the comedy Bridesmaids. The protagonist is a single working class woman who struggles with her finances, much like many of us. She's also watching her best friend get married while she is still single. Many people can actually start to relate to her struggle, her turmoil. She's not fundamentally a bad person. She wants the best for her friend, but she feels an inner turmoil. She feels the pain of her situation and it's reflected back at her what she doesn't have. So I touched on this in the last tip. What is the core problems that your character are trying to solve in the film? This doesn't necessarily mean their desire because their desire might be very unique to them, but what are they struggling through? What are they living with day to day that is hard for them? Once you understand what their problem is, it's time to do your research. But let's go back a step. Let's go back. If you check out my previous episode, we actually go through the ideas of conflict and how to bring that out from your characters, how to understand it. And this is a great time to use that information to work out exactly what pain points your audience has. So as I said in the previous point as well, in Bridesmaids, the lead character is dealing with many life problems that are outside the main desire of her life. So in the film, her desire is to be the best possible friend for her best friend as she gets married. On the flip side, what makes it so much more difficult for this character to actually obtain this desire is that she is struggling with financial and relationship troubles, which are only highlighted more and more and more throughout the film, especially when we meet her best friend's new friend who happens to be rich and happy with none of the same problems that she has, which only goes to highlight our protagonist's deep core problems even further. 
we can relate to the protagonist in Bridesmaids because we can understand and empathize with how she's feeling and reacting to this new threat to her friendship. So because we understand it and we can feel as though we feel the same way, we really start to understand how powerful it is to choose characters, to develop characters who have similar ideas, concepts and morals to ourselves that we can actually get behind. So taking our detailed information about our protagonist and then taking the information about the core conflicts and issues that we're discussing in the film, we can start to really describe who our audience could be. People who might be struggling through the same issues, they might be the same gender, the same age group, the same ethnicity. They could also be groups of people who might empathize with having been through the same issues previously. Your film might be dealing with profession, skills, hobbies. Start to look at audiences who might be of the same ilk or in a similar profession to the one that you're presenting in the film. Such as if you're doing a biopic about a world-class athlete, then you probably know that if you tap into the market of athletes around the world, they're gonna be interested to see your film. If you've had trouble with the last two techniques, this one is super powerful in helping you to develop the previous two questions all the way to the point where you have a really, really strong idea of who your audience is. So you're gonna find at least, at least 10 films that have a similar theme, genre or conflict within the film. Then you're going to start Googling these films and finding out as much as you possibly can about the audience and the box office for the film. Don't worry, there's tons of information online. Some films don't have it. Just move on, I'm sure you'll find more. And this should be a practice that you do for your films anyway. During the writing process, and even when we're watching films, humans instinctually categorize films into different areas. So this should be something that you can do. And if you have problems, just Google search. 10 films like this, 10 films that discuss this, and you'll find lots and lots of lists out there where people have watched things and discussed them online. Now, if you haven't watched any of the films in your list, this is probably the moment where you should probably go out and watch those films. Go and check them out. Go start looking at what they do really well and what they don't do really well, what you can improve on, and make sure that your film doesn't fall into the same traps. Next, start looking at the box office. Start looking at, okay, what was their budget? How much did they make? And what did they do wrong? Did they make money? Did they lose money? Who went to see it? What was the male and female gender figures in each country? Because different countries have different societal norms. And this is a great opportunity for you to understand, well, actually, I think my film that's uh, it's got this theme might do really well in Thailand. So in that case, I should probably make sure that, so when I design my budget, I need to make sure that I've got some subtitling money as well and make sure that I'm getting to the audiences who want my content. Once you've done your research, you'll either see one of two things. One, you'll see that the audiences that they have actually drawn into their films are the same as yours. Well, congratulations, you've done a good job. You know that you're on the right track. You can now more successfully go to marketers, financiers, producers with your concept, with your film, and actually sell your film because you've got the information that your film is actually wanted, that there is an audience out there who want your content. Secondly, and don't worry if this is the case, maybe, the audiences out there for those films are actually different to the audience that you've put down for your film. Now it's a great time to ask, why did my idea of who might be interested in my film be so different to those that are similar to my own? And maybe I need to go back and adjust who might be interested in my film. You might find that there is some similarities and there's also a completely different audience you didn't expect who might be interested in your film. And that just adds value to your film when it goes out and you're trying to sell it, that you know that there's even more audiences out there willing to watch your content and you have the figures and numbers to back it up. So we looked at Bridesmaids before, so let's look deeper into Bridesmaids statistics, budget and the market information that we can find out. With a very, very quick Google search, I found out that 33% of the audience were male. We probably wouldn't have expected that audience to be quite so big. So why did so many men go to watch this film? Sometimes it could be if it's released on Valentine's, you get far more equal numbers for films that men don't generally go to as an audience. However, this film came out in June. It's a summer comedy. 
So what that meant was they did a very, very good job of appealing to both male and female audiences. Also, 63% of the audience were over the age of 30. This is a really interesting demographic. Generally, we don't think of audiences over the age of 30 being the dominant audience in the cinema, but they were for this film. That means that the film was dealing with ideas and concepts and issues that that age group were dealing with at, at that point in their lives, and it really resonated with them. Here's a pro tip. Use this information that you've gathered, you've created, and start to use it to help guide your marketing plan from now. Before you've done any pre-production, before you've done any production, before you shot a frame, it's going to help guide what BTS you get, what footage you get, how are you going to sell your, your film and make sure that you have enough content for the life of the film to keep interacting with your audience. In review, Yes, I know you have your own perspective on how this film needs to be made, but don't forget you are making a film for an audience. So it's for their enjoyment, not yours. So it's your responsibility to ensure that the content, the story is designed for that audience. Number one, who is your protagonist? Find out who they are and then find out what audience might like to watch that type of person on screen. Number two, focus on the main problems and themes and issues that your film is exploring and then look for a group of people who might be interested in watching that. Are they going through something similar or maybe they've gone through that in the past? Number three, look for films that have done something similar to your film. They might be the same genre, theme or problem. Now research, how did it sell, where did it sell and who watched it? Find out who the audience was for those films and they're probably the audience for your film.